Hello, beautiful creatives. It is Michelle with Inner Journey Studios. And today I am super excited. We are going to be doing a fun and cute black cat duo. Now I've also included a tracer if you would rather do this as a single painting on an eight by 10, you can definitely do that. But the one I'm gonna be demonstrating today is a duo um, that will have the words on one and the black cat on the other. So it is going to be the super cute pumpkins, potions, and black cats. And then the other one will have just a black cat on it. So the supplies today are fairly limited, so it's gonna be fun. Um, it's quick, but the words are a little tedious, but I'll show you some tricks, some tips and tricks to make them go a little quicker. Um, so your colors today, super limited. We are using red and yellow ochre. And then I've got a little bit of white and a little bit of black. That's it. That's what we're using for the whole thing. Super fun, great for the fall. You can of course switch these colors up however you want, but this is what I'm using for mine. And I will show you how we're gonna mix and match to make this fabulous. You will also need your tracer if you're using it. Um, these can be found on the tracer link. And we've got the words on one, the black cat on the other. Or as I said, there's another one that has both of them that can be used for an eight by 10 that's all inclusive on one. But you will want that. You will want some tracing paper. You will want something to trace with. I have a stylus, but you can use a pen, a pencil, um, the back of a brush, whatever you have, that is what you will want to use. Um, if you have it for the background, I have this buffalo plaid stencil that I love. Um, I also have a video that shows how to make your own buffalo plaid without a stencil. So if you're interested in that, just let me know in the comments and I will put a link to that video or you can find it on my Facebook Inner Journey Studios page. Um, but to make it a little easier today and quicker, I'm gonna be using the stencil an old gift card or credit card. I'm gonna be using two black, two different black um, paint markers. The one is a Posca and it is a kind of like a medium tip one. The other one, make sure this is, yeah, you can see this. The other one, I don't even know what brand it is, but it's this, um, so really any black, uh, paint marker. This actually has acrylic paint in it, but you can see that's a really fine tip. So I'm using both of those. You don't need these. You can actually also use a paintbrush to do the words, but I like using the paint pen. It goes much faster than a paintbrush. Let's see, what else do we need? Oh, of course. We need our surfaces. I'm painting mine on these wood cradle boards. I love these. Um, it's a nice smooth surface. I have, and you're gonna want two of them. These are an eight by eight, eight inch by eight inch. Um, I have gessoed it ahead of time. So I did put white gesso on to make it easier to paint. If you don't do that, the paint really soaks into this and it's hard to put, especially the first initial coat on. So I like to use just so I did that ahead of time, let it dry and then you're good to go. You'll want two of these. All right, I think that's everything. Paint brushes, of course, water, paper towels, you know, the usual suspects. So I did this one already. I started this one. I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you how to do this background. Um, on this one and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to finish the words on that. I did the words ahead of time, most of them because they are a little more tedious and you really did not need 
you know, an hour of me putzing around doing the lettering. So I just thought I did most of it so you could see what it looked like. And then I just have a couple letters left that I'll show you some tips and tricks on how to make it go a little quicker for you. All right, so grab your paints, grab your surface, whatever you are painting on. Let me get mine set up over here a little better. I want to make sure we have plenty of room so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, and speaking of tips and tricks, I wanted to just share with you this. So I have started using this, not all the time, but often I use this with wells in it. And I'm really loving this. But here is the trick that I use. I've got press and seal multi-purpose wrap from Glad. This is, you just press it on and it seals right away, no problem. And I put that on before I put my paints in because that way when I go to clean it, my palette always stays nice and white, which makes it much nicer for um, mixing colors and being able to see what you have. And it peels right off. I'm not spending a ton of time washing it. I'm not wasting water washing it. I'm not putting all the paints down the sink that way. Like it just pulls right off. I toss it. I'm ready to go next time. So that's a little, uh, little tip you might want to um, take advantage of. All right, so let's go ahead and start. I am going to take a a wide brush not too wide um let's see i don't even have a marking oh there it is um this is a three quarter inch flat brush so that is what i'm going to use to lay down my initial coat now i want it yellow but you will notice that i have this really light color yellow like it's a little yellowish orange so what I want to do is I'm going to take a scoop of my yellow ochre, a couple of scoops actually, I want a fairly good amount of that, and then I'm going to take the tiniest bit of red. Now I don't want this to be orange, but I do want to tie it in with the orange I'm going to make. So what happens is when I put a little bit of this red because we'll be using this red to make orange in a minute, and I put it in with the yellow, it's actually going to make it harmonious with the orange when I make the orange. And that's what allows this to look like it goes together so well, is both of those are actually mixed with the same colors. So then I'm gonna go ahead and grab in my white. I'm gonna need a fair amount of that white. All right, and now I'm just going to mix this all together until I get the color yellow I want. Now, it doesn't have to be exact. Yours could be a little darker, a little lighter than mine. You know, it does not have to look exactly like mine. Um, your yellow ochre might be a different yellow ochre than I'm doing, so it might give you a little different coloring. But basically, we're just looking for a fairly light fairly light yellow. Let's add just a touch more of that red in there. And make sure to really get that mixed up well. And I want to mix enough that I know I have enough to cover my board. So now if we look, we can see that's quite a bit lighter than where we started. So I know that that's gonna go really nice with the orange that I created. I'm gonna pull this aside a little bit. Now, I often ask myself before I start painting, what do I wanna do with the sides? So sometimes I paint the sides to go with what's on top and sometimes I don't. This, tonight I'm not going to, I want today's painting to have black around the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about painting them if a little paint gets on them. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to worry about doing the top. And I'm going to take my paint. Now because I've gessoed it, 
this is going on really nice. You do not have to use a, um, a wood panel. This will work just fine if you want to use a canvas. You know, use what you have. But I am just going to use, I like the look of the wood can, the um, wood panel for some of the home decor type paintings, which is what I consider this. This will be part of, I've got some cute ceramic pumpkins I think I'm going to put this with. Um, with some silk flowers, you know, some silk, uh, uh, like viney, flowery kind of things for fall. And create a little display on my counter. I think this will look really nice. So I'm just putting a nice coating on this. My main goal is just to get all of the surface covered. There's going to be a lot going on on here. So if your paint, like if you have some darker or lighter areas, which sometimes happens when you're covering a big area, I don't worry about that because we're going to be going over with the stencil and then we're going to be putting a big black hat, like bam, right in the center of it. So if you have some color incons inconsistencies, it's just not going to matter. So basically, we just want to do what we can to get this covered. Now, remember when you get yours done, please share it um, and tag me in it. I love seeing the work that you create from my tutorials, uh, whether you do exactly what I'm doing or you use it to inspire yourself. Maybe you do a different background or different color scheme, or, you know, there's just all kinds of different ways that you can create your own art. But I would love to see what you are creating that is inspired by what we did today. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Please ignore the sound for a moment. Let's see here. just a little bit make sure we can see all of it all right so I've got this done I love that I can see when I'm drying it I noticed that there were a few light spots in that but like I said I'm just not even going to stress that because we're going to have a lot going on it just won't even be noticeable so now I want to mix my orange I'm just going to use the same well I was in um, because I'm using the same colors. I won't be using the white, but the small amount of the light that's left in there will be just fine. All right. So it's probably more than what I'm going to need, but that's all right. Now I don't want to take too much, but I do want to get a decent amount. So I just put the corner of my brush in of that red. Um, if you are wondering, the red I'm using is a Tuscan red by Deco Art, but really any red that you have is gonna work. So now I wanna mix an orangey color. It is important to get all that red mixed in there though, because if I don't, then I'm gonna get red streaks and I definitely don't want that. I wanna keep these colors very muted 
very earthy. All right, let's add a little more of this yellow ochre in there. Cleaning the side of my brush off occasionally just to make sure that we're getting everything mixed in. Now, I think, I think I like that. Let's add just a little bit more. I'm feeling like that is going to be a pretty good orangey color. That's a more red, maybe. And really, color mixing is just, you just mix it until it looks good. <laughs> until it looks like a color that you want to use. So we're going for kind of an orangey color. Sometimes you get it right off the bat, and sometimes you're just gonna do a little bit more mixing until you get what you need. But don't be afraid to try color mixing. I know when I first started doing art many years ago, I was using a lot of the craft paints and which I still love using because I got to tell you, there's nothing like just grabbing the color you want, paint and go, you know, <laughs> like sometimes we don't want to mix, but there is a lot of liberation that comes when you can paint, when you can mix your own paint colors. It doesn't limit you to what somebody else has created for you to use. And also, it allows you to have fewer colors um, when you're working. So it's kind of nice where you don't have like a gazillion colors that you're trying to figure out what to use. You just grab what, you know, you, you know that if I take the yellow and the red, I can mix my orange. And then I can take that same yellow with white and a little red to mix my yellow and you know, you just start to learn what you can mix together to get the colors you need. So you don't need, you know, 25 colors to do a painting. You can do what you need with just a handful of colors. So it's kind of, it's very liberating. All right, I am gonna use, let's see, this is a 5 8 inch Royal and Lang, Lang, Lang Nickel. <laughs> I'm sure I'm butchering that name. Um, it is a nice uh, rough flat surface. This is for stenciling and I want it dry. Okay, I'm also gonna keep a paper towel nearby. So when you stencil, um, I'm gonna be holding on, you'll see in the center here, let me make sure you get the right side. I think this is the side I want. Um, so I'm gonna line this up the way that I want it trying to keep it kind of straight, getting it as straight as I can. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be using these solid areas to hold down and you really want, you don't want your stencil to move around. So I'm gonna be really making sure that I hold this down. The key to successful stenciling, many people, especially when they first start, um, they struggle a little bit with the stenciling because it you end up with with paint underneath and you don't get a nice crisp line like you do on these like you can see these are pretty crisp you know there's somewhere it got a little underneath but not really too much that's a pretty nice nice stencil for you know the kind of work we're doing so what you want to do is take your brush you get it in your paint but not too much and then you just want to offload it. Now, the reason I like these wells, I can just offload it right here. And then I like to just tap it on a paper towel. And then I'm going to hold it down. And I'm going to start to work. Yep. And see how nice that's looking? Now, I want to go in here. I'm going to go with the lines. And then I'm also going to go against them. And then I'm checking to make sure I'm doing okay. 
Um, once I get going, I won't need to check as often, but when I first start, I really like to check and make sure I don't have too much paint. Um, the color is, is depositing okay. And very much like the yellow, I'm not too worried about getting even coverage. I mean, I wanna make sure that we see the color, obviously. Um, but if it's a little, you know, some places lighter, some places darker, that's gonna be okay. All right, so we are doing well. I kind of bounce around a little bit sometimes when I'm doing a bigger design like this, you know, that's covering a lot of space. Oh, this is turning out nice. And I'm just gonna keep going. And you can see I'm not picking up paint every single square I'm doing. I'm going for a little bit, getting some more paint, offloading it, tapping it on my paper towel, and then I'm coming back. And you can see how nice that's, that's coming through. Look how beautiful that is. All right, I'm gonna carefully lift my hand up and move it. Because remember, I wanna make sure that the stencil stays in place. But I need to move my hand a little bit so I can get a good, you know, good grip on it. I need to move it so I can get up here. Now I'm being careful. I don't want this to move around as I'm going back and forth. I don't want it to buckle up and stuff like that. So I'm not pushing hard, I'm just kind of, um, dusting over the top with paint. You can go in circles with it, you know, just kind of see what works for you. And then every so often I pick it up just to make sure, you know, double check. I don't have too much paint on my brush. I'm not like you know, getting a lot of bleeding or anything. And even if it does bleed, there's things that you can do to kind of clean it up afterwards. But if we don't have to, that is preferable. So with the stenciling, it's less is more when you stencil, okay, with paint. You really don't want a lot of paint on your brush and you do not want your brush wet, you definitely want to have a dry brush when you do this. When you get these nice um, thick bristles, like these bristly brushes that are flat, they're made for stenciling. You can buy these at the different craft stores and um, that is what they are made for. They are used for stenciling. They're made for that purpose. And it really gives a nice, appearance with your stencils if you're using them in a way that you're being caught you're being uh, intentional with how much paint you put on it you're keeping the brush dry and you're just checking your work occasionally when I first started the hardest thing for me with stenciling was figuring out how much paint to use because I always used way too much I mean, you can even see I mixed way more than what I needed. This would have probably been enough to do both of them. And truthfully, if you're doing this, if you're doing two of them like I am, oh, see, you can see that just popped up a little bit. I need to be more careful of that. If you are doing two of them, I really do recommend you mix the paint for both of them and do the background for both of them at the same time. I did mine separate because I wanted to... Um, do the words ahead of time on mine because I knew that was going to be time consuming. Um, but if you mix the paint at the same time, you can ensure that you get the exact color on both of them. This should be close enough. 
um, but I don't know that it's going to be exactly the same. And that's okay too. Not everything has to be matchy match. So I dip it, I offload, I tap it on my paper towel just to make sure I don't have too much paint on. And then I go over it. I tap, I'm sorry, get some paint on, I offload it here, I tap it on my paper towel, and then I come back. And you can see I just move my hand around very carefully. I want to make sure I don't move the stencil. Now, the stencil, you can always readjust the stencil to get it on, but really it's best if it stays in place the whole time. You can see how nice that's coming. I'm so excited to take this off and see how it looks. Yeah, I think this one's a little lighter than my other one, but again, I'm not worried about that. I think it'll just add to the charm of it. Now that one, I got a little too much paint. But it's not too bad. It should be okay. Stenciling is a lot of fun once you start to play with it. There's so much you can do with it. And a lot of people get, um, they'll try it once or twice and get frustrated with it and just think it's too hard or it's, you know, they're like, oh, I don't like stenciling, stenciling's not for me kind of thing because they, uh... huh? hold on y'all, sorry. Because the first time they tried it, I've got a few things wrong. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna have a black cat over there so I'm not gonna worry about it. Um. They've tried it and they're like, oh, stenciling isn't for me because when they tried it, they, you know, kind of made a mess or it bled or it didn't look good. So they think it's too hard, but really it just takes a little practice. And then we take it off and look at how awesome that looks. So let's see, it's definitely lighter than this, but again, I think it's gonna be okay. It's actually close enough. I like this one too. You really can't go wrong with the colors. So the nice thing about stenciling is it actually does dry pretty darn quickly because you're using so little paint. So this is like basically mostly dry at this point. I'm gonna just touch it with a blow dryer for a minute and then we will do the cat transfer on it. And it's done just like that. And this this uh, stencil that I used, by the way, um, I just got this from Amazon. And uh, I've not ordered stencils from them before, I don't think. Um, I was amazed at how good the quality of this is. It's actually really quite impressive. Um, and it was inexpensive. I think I got eight of them, different sizes of the Buffalo plaid. And then I got a checkered pattern also in different sizes. They all came together and it was only like $10 for all of it. Um, so considering that a lot of times one stencil is five or six dollars, I thought that was pretty good. Um, and I'm impressed with the, um, with the quality of it. So let's see, do I have these? There we go. I want to make sure that the lines are going the same way. So I'm going to turn it. And then to do the transfer, transfer, oh, you know what I want to do first? So I'm going to put, and this is optional for you, but I'm going to put like a splatter of paint in the background that the cat will be on um, just to kind of tone down some of this. So it's not just like, here's a background and here's a cat. So what I'm gonna do is take my gift card. 
actually, I guess this isn't a gift card. This is my entrance card to Disney a couple of years ago. And I'm just going to, oh, I need more paint than that. I'm just going to bring some paint from the center out. I'm just going to scrape some on just to give a little, you know, just a little visual interest. Make it a little more artsy, not quite so. Here's a stencil and here's a silhouette, right? We're going to have just a little bit more going on. And once we get the cat on, most of this won't even be seen, but that's all right. Now you can see that a little bit of yellow came through and I'm just gonna leave that because I think that really works. All right, so we've got that on there. That just gives us a little bit of paint splatter. I love the way that looks. And you want that haphazard. You don't want that to be like a specific shape or design. It's okay if it's a little wonky. Our next step is to put the cat on. So the first thing we want to do is take our um, tracing paper and just set that on here. Moving it around where it's not quite as used. All right. And then I've got the cat. Now you could cut this down to an eight by eight. I don't, I just kind of figure out about where I want it. I want it kind of centered. There we go. Now with the um, tracing paper, you want the shiny side facing down and you want to be a little careful of where you're placing your hand because this will transfer on to your paint pretty easily. You can already see I've got some. Now, with this particular painting, I'm not actually concerned if we get some extra on. I'll show you in the Word one how we got some of the graphite that transferred in areas that weren't the words. Um, but I don't worry about it because it kind of gives a little distressed look. And I was totally okay with that, given that this is kind of a little bit of a Halloween look. What I like about this is this, you know, it's kind of, we've got the pumpkins, potions, and black cats, so it's, it's definitely a Halloween feel. Um, but it's not... Halloween, Halloween, like, I think you could leave this up all fall. Like, I think this could be your fall decor and or your Halloween decor. Like, I think it would fit in with both. All right, so I'm just bringing this around. This would also be fun if you have a cat you could take a picture of your cat, you know, sitting like this or in a different pose um, and print it out onto copy paper, not not like at a, um, an actual photo paper, but copy paper, so it's thinner. And it'd be kind of cool to um, trace that. And then you have your cat, like it's actually your cat. Um, you can totally do this. Like I have cats and I'm like, by the time I try to get them to pose or do something I want them to, seriously, they're like, I don't think so. 
Um, but if you happen to have some good pictures of your cats that would make good interesting silhouettes, you could think about using that. And even though like you're still gonna do a black and it's gonna be a silhouette, so nobody would really know, you would know, right? And how cool would that be? I love that idea. All right, I just wanna check and make sure that this has mostly transferred. Um, and I will say it probably works best if your paint is really dry, like mine truly could be drier. And that's probably why I have some of this sticking in places I don't want is because my paint is not dry all the way, but I'm not really too worried about it, so. All right, I think we are good. So we've got the um, silhouette of the cat, the outline of it. I think you can see that okay. Um, and I did the exact same thing with the words. So the words were done the exact same way on here. So I just had the uh, graphite paper, you know, figured out where I wanted this and then just carefully went around each of the words. So that was it. This takes a little bit of time. There's a lot of lines here, but you know what? Pop on some good music or TV show, you know, whatever, and do it while you're watching TV. Um, and then it's done in no time, you know, before you know it, you have it done. All right, but you can see here how, because the paint's wet, we got it like stuck there. And this is not coming off. Now, if it bothered me, I could put a little bit more paint around here, but truthfully, it just doesn't bother me. So I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, I want to next paint in my cat. I love doing silhouettes because they look really good. They're like a little dramatic, um, but they're quick and easy to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start you know, I think we're just going to do the paint. We might bring the paint marker in to do the edges if we need to clean it up a little bit, but let's see if we can do it with just the paintbrush. So I'm going to start up here. I am using a half inch Royal and Lang Nickel uh, brush. I've dipped it directly in black. I'm using a flat one. I like these, believe it or not, these work really well for going around things in detail like this. Now sometimes I lost my, I've lost my lines a little, oh I see it now, okay. I'm bringing it around here. And then here is the ear here. And then the ear is here. And I am gonna bring in my paint marker just for this ear part. Just because this is a little smaller of an area I was having kind of a hard time seeing it. I'm gonna do the same down here for the nose and the mouth. So I interchange, like I go between my paint markers and my brushes often when I'm doing these, um, just because sometimes I can just get better detail with the paint marker, with these silhouettes, than I can um, with the brush. I mean, you can totally do it with the brush and I have, but honestly, if you can do the shortcut, why not, right? All right, I think that's gonna be very helpful. And that just also helps me to see these areas a little bit as well. So I'm gonna come back in here if you need to, you can do a smaller brush. You know, if you need to bring in a smaller brush, you can totally do that. I might do that. Oh, you know what? I can also, I forget sometimes I can move my painting around. 
<laughs> I'm like, oh, that's right. I can move this to get into where I want to be. There we go. That works perfect. I love this black cat theme that Tara Lynn from Paint, Rinse, Repeat is doing this month. And I'm so honored that she asked me to be a part of it. She always has great events going on. Um, and this is just so much fun. I love cats. I love black cats. I just think this is awesome. So I am as, as excited as can be about this one. And I love Halloween. It's such a fun time of year. All right, so I'm gonna flip it back around in just a minute, but don't be afraid to move your paintings around when you're painting. Now, if some of this extra color there bothers you, just take, you know, if you get that happen, you can just go ahead and take some of your paint over it. Just take your um, credit card again and just bring it in there. I'm not gonna, I don't think, cause I think I'm okay with it, but we'll see once we're done. I might change it. I might change my mind. All right, there's my kitty's face. It's coming around the body. These panels, by the way, you can get these at most of the craft stores and the art stores. Um, you can also buy them on Amazon if you're looking to, you know, if you want more than one or two of them. Like if you find you're using them a lot, you can order them pretty inexpensively on Amazon. And they're kind of a fun alternative I like painting on canvas too. I paint on a lot of different surfaces, so I, I definitely like my surfaces. Um, but sometimes I just really like painting on the wood uh, because I just think it's so smooth, you know? It's just really, really nice and smooth to paint on. But like I said, you can totally, you can do this in your art journal. Like this would be great to do um, in your journal, on journal paper, you can do it um, on canvas. I mean, there's so many different things you could do it on. I'd love to see what you decide to paint yours on. This could be fun to do like on a tote bag. That'd be kind of cute. What else could we paint on it, paint it on? Maybe a charger? like a plate charger thing. Lots of options. All right, so I'm just doing it all black, coming around. Feel free to use different brushes than I am. If you need yours bigger or smaller, or you want a round one, you wanna try a filbert, this is not a technique that you need to use a specific type brush. Use the one that you are comfortable with because that's going to be the right one for you. And look at how fast that's coming together. It's amazing how quickly that goes. And I might bring my um, paint pen back in here. I really like the paint pen for getting nice crisper lines. Although I will say sometimes it's a little challenging on the wood. Um, because it can, it kind of wants to, the wood has a grain to it and it kind of wants to uh, get caught in that a little bit. But you know, it's like anything else. The more you do it, the more you learn 
how to do things with the tools that you have and the surface you're using. I'm super excited to see what you guys do. I was thinking this would be really cute with a purple background also. Um, or maybe like that witchy green color that could be really fun for the holidays, for the fall Halloween time. You know, I always think of Halloween as like the purple and that green, uh, like almost a neon witch green color. Oranges, of course, like what we're using here. Um, so much that you could do, right? So don't be afraid to change it up. I mean, even the cat, you could change up. Maybe you don't want your cat to be black. Maybe you want it to be a different color or look a little different. All right, I'm definitely gonna bring the paint pen in here to clean this up a little bit. Well, I think we'll let that dry before I do that. Now for coming around these edges, let me show you a little trick with the um, with the chiseled, not the chiseled, but the flat brush. So I used to think that I needed a real thin brush, like a round thin brush to go around uh, lines. And you can do that, that definitely has its place. But if you take your brush and you make sure that you wipe the paint so you've got a nice crisp you know, your bristles are all together and you bring that right up against the line that you're wanting to do. You just kind of butt it up there. You can much more easily get this nice straight line going on. You can get right in there. And then I usually just try to feather the paint out a little bit. So that's one way you can get a nice crisp line. Now I'm gonna let this be for a moment um, and then I'm gonna come back through with this to clean some of these lines up, but I want it to be dry before I do that. I also, I'm gonna take, I want a little bit of this coming out here. Um, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of paint. I don't want a whole lot, like I don't want it to be you know, bam, look at all this, but I do want just a little bit. not you know it's coming out from all around so I'm loving how that looks how cute is that you guys we got our black cat um, and we're gonna let that dry we'll come back and do the edges in a minute but I want to move over to our words for a minute we'll let the black cat dry and then we'll do a little detail but let's take a look at our words um, and how we're gonna do these so this one, I definitely needed to let it dry more. It ended up with quite a bit of the black graphite because I had my hand on it and there was a lot going on. Now, I am going to leave it be because I think it kind of looks cool. Um, we already have some distressed look. It's, you know, black. It's Halloween. I feel like it just goes with it. But if you didn't like it, you could always take some paint over and kind of touch it up with some paint on your fingers just to of this color to kind of blend it in a little bit more. So on my bigger letters, I use my Posca pen. I love that because it just makes sure you shake them really well. And I love this because I can get right in there. 
Posca pens are like amazing. I love them. And they come in different tips, different sizes. So it works really good to really get in there, but a lot of these letters have a lot going on. You know, there, there's different curves in that. So this bigger tip, while it works really well with these ones, I don't want to use it for all the little ones. I used it for the um, L because that was kind of just a straight down to show you. But for these, I like to use this one. Now this is going to go a little slower than that. And I try to keep this, so a couple things. First off, you'll notice I went through and I had outlined all of my letters before I started coloring them. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had them nice and outlined so I could see what I was working with. Because sometimes even the graphite, it gets lost in the painting a little bit. You can't see it as well. So I went through and I outlined it. This is a super, super fine tip. And I am sorry, I do not know... Let me see if I have the brand name of these. Oh, I do. Okay. I found these on TikTok, actually. They're Grabby. G-R-A-B-I-E. I don't know if these are available on Amazon, but they were on TikTok. I bought them. I saw somebody else use them, and I bought them. Um, they're a 0.7 millimeter tip. These are multi-surface, so they can be used on, like, anything. Um, so I'm trying them out for the first time with this, and I've got to say I'm really loving them. They're very juicy. There's a lot of paint in them. They were fairly reasonably priced. I don't remember what I paid, but they weren't too badly priced. But because the tip is so fine, it does concern me doing it on the wood because I'm afraid I'm going to really mess up the tip. So as I'm doing it, I'm trying to kind of dance on the top of the wood i'm trying not to like write you know i'm trying not to dig in i'm trying to go really light and just sort of skim the top and i'm finding that's working pretty well with this so i just kind of i take my time with these because the one thing that I noticed with this particular brand is sometimes when it gets caught, it, I don't know if there's extra paint coming out or why I'm getting specks there, but I noticed I was starting to get like some specks outside of it. Where did I have that? I had it on, oh, right up here on my M. It's, it like shot out a little bit. So that was when I was like, okay, I need to go really slow, take my time and not go too fast, not rush it. So these are kind of nice for just relaxing. I think this would be easier on a smooth surface, but even though the wood is smooth, there is still definitely um, a little bit of grain going on. Now you can also use a paintbrush to do exactly what I'm doing. If you don't have paint markers, don't stress it. Just take a small paintbrush and I'll show you on the C how to do that. The key to lettering is just to take your time. There is nothing magical about lettering. I know sometimes people are a little intimidated. They see the letters, they're like, oh, I can't do that. But I'll tell you what, if you trace them out and you just take your time doing this, it really is, it's not that bad really not that bad to do. So we're just going to take our time. And I don't worry if I get mine exact look. If I was stenciling, I could get these pretty spot on. You know, it would look exactly like this. But I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm hand doing them. I'm hand tracing them. So like, you know, my K right there is a little thicker than here. It is on here. Here it's thinner. Oh, well. We're not going to care about that because at the end of the day, when you look at it, when you're having this hung on your wall and you have, you know, both of these together. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is. Or you have them standing up with some pumpkins around them or however you're going to display them. 
nobody's going to notice. They're just going to see the whole thing as a whole and be like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe you made that. That's amazing. Um, they are not going to see any of the inconsistencies or any of the, oh my gosh, your one letter is a little wider than the other. Like my and, oh my goodness, I don't even know what I did there. But I went, you know what? Is anybody going to care? No. Are they going to notice? Well, you all are because I pointed it out to you. <laughs> but most people are not even going to notice. They're just going to be like, oh, that's cool. What? You made that? No way. And you're going to say, yes, I did. Because I am awesome like that. You own that. All right. I so, said, sorry, I got talking and I forgot I told you I was going to show you how to do this with the paintbrush. All right, so I will do, I'm going to do the T with the paintbrush because that A, that little line across is a pain. All right, so I've got a fairly thin paintbrush. I don't know what this one is. I think it might even be a flat. It's a number two. You could use a round. I just grabbed this one. I had it handy. So I'm going to put, I'm going to get my paint on it, but then I'm going to kind of offload a little bit because I don't want it to be like too much paint. Now, I'm gonna press it down and I'm gonna see how far out it goes. I don't wanna press it to where it goes outside of the letter, but the more that I can get covered with a single stroke, the easier it is for me. And then I just bring it up on the side again to get that side. I'm gonna get a little bit more paint because it helps if you have you know, a decent amount of paint. You don't want so much that it's going all over, but you also don't want a dry brush. And then I'm just gonna kind of paint in the areas that I missed. So this is a little tedious to do it this way, but look at, it's totally doable, right? Does not even look bad, looks pretty awesome. Anybody can buy a hand, not a hand, anybody can buy a computer printed image, a computer printed, you know, where you can buy all this stuff in the store. You can absolutely go and just buy it off the shelf and throw it up on your, you know, countertop. But there is something really awesome when you have made this yourself and you bring it out year after year and you know that you did this. Like that is some really awesome, awesome creative magic right there, you know? There's something about having homemade decor in your house, homemade paint, like paintings you've done yourself, not even just decor, but paintings. Like you do, you know, one of those paint night paintings or a tutorial on YouTube or whatever. It does not have to be perfect. The fact that you made it, that is you in that. That is your energy. It's a little bit of yourself. Um, it really creates so much amazing energy in your home to put up stuff that you have made yourself. And I think we do ourselves a disservice when we start thinking, well, my stuff's not good enough or, you know, the stuff that I see at the big box store that's, you know, printed from a computer or whatever, I should have that. That's so much better. No, the stuff you make is what gives your house character and charm and beauty in a way that something that you buy from the store can never do. So don't be afraid to put up your stuff. Don't be afraid, even if it's imperfect, to display it and to have it be part of your home. And I feel that way with these signs. Like, I know my lettering is not perfect. Really won't be perfect after today because I've used, like, two different paint pens and I've used paint on it. So my lettering is going to be all over the place with colors of black and that. But it's just not going to matter because once I have it up and I have it all together, all anybody's going to see is that, oh, that's cool. You know, that's a cool display. So don't be afraid to um, do some of this and let it be imperfect. Because honestly, that is what makes it absolutely perfect. 
All right, I think we are done with that. But I definitely have different blacks, but again, so I can see the difference because I'm looking in light. Some are shinier than others. But once I put this up in my house, you're not going to really see the difference in um, the difference in the blacks and the shades, shiny or not shiny or whatever. All right, so right now, this is where we are with this. Look at how cute. Um, your letters are the same way as the black cat. You can bring this thin black marker through it again. If you need to clean anything up, you can go, oh, look at that. Let me clean that up a little bit. Let me clean this up just a little bit. So you can use this to kind of help you get the desired look. Don't get too precious or persnickety about it, though because you don't want to overdo it. All right, we have our lettering done. Take your time with this. Give yourself the time to do the lettering. It will be so worth it to you, for you. All right, I'm coming back to this. I just want to clean up around my ears a little bit. I feel like I can do a little bit better with this. I love the cat's nose on this. It's like the sweetest little nose. There we go. And then I felt like this needed just a little bit. Where it really wanted it was right at the tail. So let's turn this around. And let's go ahead. Oh my gosh, this is the cutest, you guys. I cannot wait to see yours. I really can't wait to see how you use them to decorate. All right, I think that's good enough. I think I like that. All right, so the last thing that you're gonna do is the edges. Um, and then you might wanna seal this too. That's totally up to you whether you seal it or not. I will probably eventually seal mine. I may or may not get it sealed before uh, Halloween. I might put it up and seal it afterwards. Um, but I like to use a spray sealer on mine. I take them outside and um, I like the matte ones because I don't want it real shiny. So I just get a matte one and then I just use that to seal up the paint on it and that keeps it looking good year after year. So I'm going to need a little more black. Now, again, you could do this any color you want or no color. You can leave it. Some people like to just leave the wood look, and that's totally fine, too, um, for this because it is Halloween. I just And I've already got the um, buffalo plaid on there, so I really don't want to do a pattern on the side. I really want this to be what is showing. So... I'm just bringing my brush right up against the edge and very carefully painting it out black. Now I'm not going to show you on both of these. I'm going to do this one um, because I don't think you probably need to watch me do both of them. But I did want to make sure that you could see how one is being done. All right. So I get a good amount of paint on there. Make sure I get the edge. And I bring it right up to the edge and move it forward. So I flatten it out. I scooch it up to the edge where I want it. 
And then I just very carefully go until I run out of paint. Get a little bit more paint. I offload it on here because I want that painted anyway. And then I kind of scooch it up to the edge and very carefully, I keep it flat as far as I can go along the edge. All right, let's do that again. I hope you have had fun creating your pumpkins, potions, and black cat tonight, today. Um, please definitely share what you make. I would love to see it. If you enjoy doing this, let me know. Share it with your friends. Invite them to paint with you. Painting's always better with friends. That's why I have a art journal membership. We do stuff like this. We work in our art journals. And we just come together in a painting community to support each other, to help each other create more. Cause you know, when we have a little bit of accountability, I think we tend to get more done. <laughs> I know I do. All right, we are on the last edge. I will do the words, the word, um, I want to say canvas, not canvas, wood block. I will do that one off screen and share a picture with you. If you have any questions, let me know. And definitely, um, as I said before, I'd love to see what you create. Tag me on social media at Inner Journey Studios or at Michelle Boardman. You can find me under both. Like me, follow me. Let's be friends. I love social media for that. I love it for the social aspect with my art friends and sharing our work. All right, and then I usually just do a sanity check, make sure I've got the edges. I want the corners, not the edges, corners, well, the edges too, but you can see now it's nice and black, and that's going to look so good when it's sitting on my counter. Look at how pretty that is, and I only did one coat, which I think is plenty for this. If you find it's not covering well enough, just do another coat. You can do as many as you would need. All right, that is it. We have our pumpkins and potions. Now I have this all wet. There we go pumpkins and potions, our black cat for the month of October. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy creating, happy painting, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.